All right, our next speaker coming up is a very special speaker. Her name is Kyleen, and she's suffering from multiple sclerosis. And so we're here to support her today, and she's here to share her story about why she's fighting for Medicare for All through a single-payer system. So let's make some noise for Kyleen. Make it some noise. Okay, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Lou louder, can you hear me? Okay. Um, okay, my name is Kyleen Wolfstein, and I suffer from a chronic illness known as multiple sclerosis. Okay. <laughs> for which there is no known cause and no known cure. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease that attacks my body's central nervous system, and on any given day, I experience a myriad of symptoms such as blindness, debilitating fatigue, headaches, dizziness, difficulty walking, weakness, and cognitive changes. And while I'm hoping for a cure, I'm not in denial about the end stages of MS, not being pretty. Many people are left paraplegic, quadriplegic, and unable to breathe or eat on their own. The only option I have is preventative care, meaning that I need to take a disease-modifying medication every day to slow down the progression of the disease. The name of the medication I take is called Tecfidera, and the out-of-pocket cost is $6,000 a month. Limiting my stress, eating healthy, and exercise are also an important part of managing my disease. But limiting my stress has been hard to do. As a result of having MS, I am now on the brink of declaring bankruptcy, becoming homeless, and losing my cats. Three and a half years ago, I suddenly went blind and was taken to the hospital. Later that night, after a series of MRIs and other tests, I was diagnosed with MS and kept in the hospital for the next six days. Weeks later, I received my first two invoices in the mail, although many more would follow. One was for almost $5,000 and the other was for $800. I knew I didn't have the money, but it almost seemed like a good deal considering the total cost of the hospital stay was $75,000, and I thought it was generous that my insurance company was paying $69,000 of it. At that time, I had an individual insurance policy through Blue Shield, and the monthly payments were around $300, with an annual deductible of $6,500. In a blink of an eye, I went from being healthy with good credit to being sick with $6,000 in medical debt. The following two years snowballed as I continued to max out my deductibles, have high co-pays, and even higher monthly premiums. My existence turned into paying rent and medical-related expenses. As a 34-year-old college graduate that has worked my whole life, paid into Social Security, and paid my taxes, I never thought I'd be faced with the possibility of becoming homeless. Medical debt has depleted my savings and it's obliterated my credit. Because I'm on temporary disability due to not feeling well, my income is considered below the poverty line. I need to move next month and I'm literally faced with the choice of paying health insurance or paying my rent. On top of that, I can't help but think, who wants to rent to an impoverished person with bad credit, no savings, and an unpredictable debiling, de debilitating disease? It's terrifying. I went to the Housing and Urban Development County office to see what kind of assistance is available, and I found out that Section 8 housing waiting list in LA has been closed since 2009. It's almost as if chronically ill and disabled people should waste away in the streets. So why is this happening? It's happening because of our predatory healthcare system is driven by greed. We are all being targeted by it. Not only the people that are sick, but people that are well and might become sick. Nobody is exempt. Doctors are also being targeted and exploited by insurance and drug companies. My neurologist told me that insurers are now paying him around $27 per patient visit. That's less than the cost of two movie tickets. When we discussed the stress of the financial issues related to having MS, it was clear that he is being negatively impacted by the hijacking of our healthcare system as much as I am. He deserves better. I'd also like to acknowledge the doctors and researchers out there who work hard every day at finding cures and treatments for illnesses, only to find out that their hard work will only be available to a small percentage of people. 
I've been asked why I pay $437 a month for health insurance when I might be eligible for Medi-Cal. Well, I'll tell you. Medi-Cal does not cover the cost of the medication I need. As I stated earlier, the out-of-pocket cost for the drug I take is $6,000 a month. If I switch to Medi-Cal, I would have to switch to a medication called Tisabre. Tisabre has a high risk of causing a deadly brain infection in people, uh, the deadly brain, in brain infections called PML. And it, it's likely in people that are positive for something called the JC virus. I am positive for the JC virus. So going on Medi-Cal is literally risking my life. Uh, it's not an option for me. There are a couple other medications that Medi-Cal would cover, but my neurologist says that neither of those are strong enough to stop the progression. So again, do I pay my rent or do I pay my health insurance? Nobody should ever have to ask themselves this question. Everybody deserves health care. America is the only civilized country in the world to have an uncivilized healthcare system. The reason there is not equal access boils down to one issue, and it's profit. Our healthcare system is a system of organized crime, where a few profit at the expense of many. When the number one cause, when the number one cause of bankruptcy in America is medical debt, and when there are more pharmaceutical lobbyists in Washington than big oil, guns, and tobacco combines, it's clear that this is a situation of good versus evil. I know my life has value, so today I stand here and I fight for it. And since this fight is a matter of life or death, I will not stop until we win. We won't stop until we accomplish our goal of implementing a single payer system and making healthcare accessible to every person that needs it. Yeah. Thank you. Give it up for Kyle one more time. Ladies and men. Thank you, Kyle for your courage. If she can fight for Medicare for all through a single payer system, so can we, am I right? Yeah.